Well, the first time I heard this wish, um, it was shortly after I'd been told I got the job. And I was so thrilled and so excited and grateful. And then I heard the song and was like, oh my God. It's one of the most beautiful things I'd ever heard. And, you know, the incredible Julia Michaels like has outdone herself, in my opinion, because this song does feel and is a new Disney classic, but it also has this beautiful sound of today. So I've, it just felt like I was like, this is moving us forward. It's like Disney can take on a new sound and feeling unapologetically. And so that's horrifying when you realize you're the one charged with <laughs> executing this well. Um, but I'm, I have a theater background, so I did what I do best, which is go through and focus on the lyric and find the truth of that. So every line is rooted in something emotional for me. Um, whether it be one of Asha's memories or one of my own. Like, isn't truth supposed to set you free? That's the question. That's what it's supposed to do. Then why do I feel so weighed down by it? And I remember, it, I mean, I've had an experience in the last two weeks of what that felt like, and I was like, oh, it hurts. And yet, the only way that I find my freedom is by speaking my truth. And her truth is, you know, so I make this wish to have something more for us than this. And that's how I got through that song. So I make this wish to have something more for us than this. Oh, I cried buckets and buckets. and But I also had these moments of like, yeah, get them! And, you know, I'm a very reactive audience member. But it was kind of odd because I was like, is, that's my voice. This is very strange, but I am rooting for this girl and these people. But I loved Chris Pine. I thought he was so delicious. His King Magnifico is sexy. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know, but it's a great character. Delicious Disney villain. It's good. There were quite a few. I mean, I wore out the Beauty and the Beast and the Aladdin VHSs, like wore them out. Loved him so much. But then I also, like, Tarzan was really special to me. That was when I really, like, was introduced to the sound of Glenn Close. What? Like, Break Your Heart, Voce, so beautiful. Um, and Trash in the Camp was, like, the, the, the rhythmic nature of that and, like, how rhythm and can tell a story. And it, I don't know, I, was, I felt very young, but it was very profound for me. So those were very important films. All you have to do is give your wish to me. Well, my favorite I can't talk about, which isn't helpful. Like, that was not a helpful thing for me to say. Um, but I think, you know, it's probably more obvious. But I, I, if you look at the animation style, like, from the first uh, scene, you know, for me, I'm like, ha! Sleeping Beauty! It's beautiful. That's one of my favorite films. So it's like, it, we, we start, and then it just goes and goes and goes. It's like, if you haven't noticed the, like, the Alice in Wonderland climbing down the rabbit hole yet, point that out, because it's cute. It made my heart go pitter-pat, just saying. So I look up at the stars to guide me And throw gosh into every morning sign No, which is an odd thing to say. I mean, I... I know my mother has a videotape of me somewhere when I was probably five or six singing part of your world because they re-released uh, The Little Mermaid. Like, they, I think they'd remastered it. And there was a featurette with like the music video and you could sing along with it, which I loved. Um, so I did and she recorded it, had like a little microphone and everything. But in my adulthood, no, I don't think so. I think, you know, This Wish is, is holding that down for me. It is the song of my life. That is what is so crazy. It's like, if anybody asks me a question about how I'm feeling about the world today, I'm just like, go listen to this wish, and I stand by it. Sure, there will be challenges that find me, but I can take them on one at a time. 
No. Yeah. You know what's so odd? This has been mo the most magical and very, it was an odd experience too, because I didn't see uh, different, you know, uh, members of our creative team until different points. So it's like we had made like half the movie and then I really got to chat with Jennifer. <laughs> And I was like, oh my god, girl, you're so amazing! And she was like, oh, you're amazing. And we just had an amazing fest, which was really fun. And, and I mean, I love her. I love her work in Frozen. She's so smart. Again, like, I feel like anytime you see, you know, Jennifer Lee's name, or you see a Chris Buck's name, or now Fawn's name, you know that Disney is taking something to the next level. And that's exciting and very scary for someone like me. But I'm thrilled to be a part of it. In the city of roses, you can turn all your wants into wishing no worries and no wonders. I don't know. Um, maybe it's called I Don't Know. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Julia, you need to help me with these lyrics, sis. I mean, honestly, it'd probably be called I'm Alive. Something in that nature. Because I, I value life, I really do. I value, you know, making it through some of the challenges that I've faced, you know. Some of the adversity, the criticism, the, the, the closed doors, like, Living to see another day, to have the opportunity to be better, is such a gift to me. So I would probably something along those lines. A home for me, for you, and all of us, the city of Rosa. I would love to find a balance with social media. That might be a little too deep for Rotten Tomatoes, but it's also honest, and I think we're living in a time where you know, for very good reason, but people are very reactive and it's very hard to, you know, have conducive or productive conversation on that platform. And it makes me sad because I do think that it can be a positive tool for change, but sometimes there's so much misinformation and I think sometimes people are not doing the homework or just the work of finding, you know, uh, reliable sources. And it's very easy to jump on a bandwagon without doing your research, and I refuse to do that. And I have always been someone that tries to put, you know, my best foot forward with, with putting positive energy out there, sharing sound sources, um, and try, trying to help find solutions. But sometimes, you know, sometimes silence is a good choice so that you can learn, so that you can hear and hold space for others. Social media is a very me, me platform, and you know what, I'm tired of me. I'm interested in other people and what their lives look like. How can I be of service to them? Um, and I think, you know, my wish right now is that we could all try to listen to each other better. I'm so nervous, I think I'm going to explode. My best friend, the King's Apprentice. Is my mouth drooping? I feel like it's drooping. Oh, it's such an honor. It's such an honor, and I, I think the, the best thing that I can hope and wish for is that I will this, this this space that I have been given the privilege to occupy it responsibly. That is my goal. And and if I do my, my job well, you know, hopefully people will be inspired by this character. They will be inspired by this film. It will make them feel good. It will fill them with hope. And then we will launch ourselves into a new chapter on a good note, you know? I think God, wouldn't that be nice to leave 2023 on a good note? <laughs> I let you live it for free and I don't even charge you rent. I clean up all your messes and I'm always there when you need to vent. I give and give and give and give. You'd think they'd all be content. And all I really want is just a little respect. And this is the thanks I get. My favorite part about being a baddie is just it's more fun. It's just simply way, way more fun. In terms of putting my own spin on it, I just did, you know, me. I didn't really, there's no um, extra sauce on it, I don't think. Yes, yes, yes! Ooh. Yes. I um, couldn't be more happy to have at least attempted to, to reach the heights of, you know, Scar and Jafar and Gaston and the rest of the gang. Um, it was such an honor to work with Ben and Julie on music that was so, creative and challenging and difficult. And um, 
again, it was just a lot of fun. It was really challenging. I'd give the clothes off Benito's back If you really needed that I'd be the first one to volunteer Henry, if your home were to crumble There's a lot of nerves all over the process. It's just, it, as long as you get time in the booth, you know, it's like you get <clears throat> first couple takes to burn off the anxiety and you burn through it, you burn through it, and then like five minutes and you're kind of still remembering some of the anxiety and then 30 minutes and you're in full flow state and that's when you're rocking and rolling. In terms of the process, I worked with, with, with Julie and Ben and her lyrics are very complicated in terms of their phrasing or it's very particular, uh, which made it difficult and a great challenge. Um, ben is such a sweetheart and so gifted working with, you know, with, with artists and helping us through uh, challenging parts of the song. Um, I worked with great uh, kind of vocal specialists and people helping me with <clears throat> all of it, with warming up and with um, finding those right notes and the right pitches and whatnot. Asha, come with me. The wishes of Rosas. Wow. People give their wishes to me and I grant the wishes I am sure are good for Rosas. It was great. I mean, like, I'm a, I'm a stickler, so there are things where I was like, I don't know why they chose that take. I would have chosen a different one. All of those things that happen every time you see a film of yours. Uh, but I was thrilled with it. I mean, the, the, you know, this was in CinemaScope and 255, the ratio is huge. So it's like a giant film experience. It's uh, water colored. So there's a lot of analog vibe to it. So it feels old, but also with this very new uh, CG bent. So it has this textural immersion. It doesn't feel so like clean, which I don't really like of newer stuff. It has a, a density in it, it, but it feels very present. So that was wild. Um, Hearing all the songs come together was, was great. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I believe I have just been threatened. Who would dare threaten you? I have no response to that. Yeah, it's, it's a big, uh, I feel like a big pat on the back. Like, that's really cool. You asked me to come play on like, what is a big deal for maybe the most important uh, entertainment organization, at least for kids. I mean, I think about, if you're a kid on planet Earth, you've been touched by something that Disney has created. And the fact that they have such an imprint on storytelling is f kind of jaw-dropping. Um, I think about my own experience and that it's so kind of ingrained in my DNA that I don't even think of all of the, every single film that I've seen when I was growing up animated. Um, so I loved it and getting to work with Ariana and getting to work with Vicar Garber and Jennifer and, and, and Chris and Fawn, all these people that have extraordinary experience in this space was great fun. There is a traitor amongst us. Find Asha. It's a dead end. With unsanded mahogany. I mean, I, I like the kind of the one straight off the bat, which is star, uh, to wish upon a star. Beautiful, elegant tie in there. The seven you know, dwarf reference, I think is pretty, pretty spot on and pretty cool. I started this. I have to finish it. I think seeing Fantasia, I think it was at the Pantages, just kind of blew my mind. I felt like it was the first psychedelic experience I'd ever had. Yeah, it was so far out. Yeah. Last night, I made a wish on a star. Uh, <laughs> and the star answered oh i think you know um the goat is pretty funny i mean the star is so cute star is the one that you want a toy of you know i'd say star three two one Asha! i'm here i'm here oh just uh, one second they i mean the the in the booth all the time during the recording sessions for for um the the acting, it was Fawn and Chris and the sound editor, um, Jennifer, and um, her co-screenwriter, um, and a couple other folks. But yeah, it was kind of, an, and some producers. So the amalgam of that was getting suggestions pretty much from all places, which I, I didn't mind at all. Um, but most of my kind of like dramaturgical questions about like a line or the syntax of something. I'd always just pitch to Jennifer, like I don't really understand what you're trying to go for. Why are we talking about this right now? Um, but I had this kind of, you know, great 
um, brain trust there. And then in terms of the singing stuff, it was all Ben and, and, um, and Julia. And Ben, particularly when he was handling the, the, the engineering. What are you doing? Valentino, don't eat that! It didn't work. When does the magic happen, huh? I'm talking. I am talking. Ha! Who knew my voice would be this low? There were so many magical moments, but I will. The the one moment that I think um, stands out because of the the uh, incredible discovery it was for the film is when we were talking about Star and whether Star should talk, and what is Star really? Can't do the work for you. Asha has to do it herself. Well, Star really is all those things that Disney gives us hope, possibility, wonder, joy. That doesn't tell you the answers. It's just there for you when you need it. And um, one of the story artists drew a little just ball of light and said, no voice, but there, and will smile when you need them, maybe a little magic. And that is when I, I, in, a, I've, in a funny way, with all the dialogue I'd written for Star before this moment, the surrendering of Star doesn't talk and Star doesn't have the answers but is there for hope, I knew exactly what to do with Star. So that was the most magical moment for me. And there were, and that's a lot because there were many on the film. This is something I haven't told anyone about um, in this t today, but Star loves yarn and strings and stuff and it was a little nod to um, the, the physicists out there who love string theory as, a, as part of the universe. And that's not what string theory is because no one knows, understands it. I certainly don't, but that little obsession with yarn was such a fun character trait for me and really grounded to bring Star's ideas forward without talking as well. And I think that was one of the fun, really fun things that I love to play with. And then through all the things Star would create, um, that was a fun, but a very specific thing to Star that, that we discovered that isn't like, you know, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a, it felt like not every star will do that, but star, this star would do that. <laughs> so I make this wish to have something more for us than this. It was a very unique process because I hadn't written the script yet. I don't even know if I was, maybe I was planning to write it, but I was just, we were in this role and we were talking about Asha and knowing we wanted that moment as a teenager where you, you're living your life, everything's fine, and then all of a sudden you're like, hey, that's not right. And you, and I always say it's a very generous time. Teenagers are the ones who want to make the world better for others. We give them a bad rep sometimes <laughs> that they're selfish, and I'm like, they're the ones who can see a better world. And this woman who doesn't know if she can have the courage to do it, and is, but her want is more for, for those, it's around her, so it's not I want love. It's I want more for them. And that generous, the generosity of that is where the star was like, well, then I'm going to come help you, as opposed to just thanks for the wish, you know. And it was just such a fun idea. And we described that to Julia. We didn't, hadn't written the script. We described this young woman. At that moment, we described the feeling. And she came back with this wish. And when I heard the line, you know, I, I've mentioned it before, I'm, I'm young, but I'm not wrong. I was like, oh, gosh. I, it just... That's the feeling when you're that age and you go through it. And, I, and that whole song was there for me when I wrote the script. So it's, it was, there's often the chicken and egg. And in this case, that was definitely first. So I guess it's the egg. That was the egg. I was the chicken. You don't have to look too hard. It's all around you, not too far. If you try to figure out just who you are. You're a star. Well, I think what's interesting about Anna and Elsa is like Anna is... There's a traditional sense of honor. She wants love. Obviously, her journey, though, we get to flip tropes and really look at what does it really mean and what is love. And, and Elsa is very magical, but she is, she is really crippled by fear. And that having Anna help, they help each other, um, is really what makes them that very specific. But Asha wants, as we said, she, she's got a fighting spirit in her, but she wants more for her world. And so, but she, but she still, I think there's always an, uh, an optimism and naivete when we begin a journey in some form. So that's where they connect. But what I love about Asha is in that declaration of I wish, she's forced to face careful what you wish for. Now, you've, now it's on you to make it come true. And you see her fight every step of the way and hopefully say to people, you know, it is hard, the journey is hard when it's a true wish like that, but it's worth it. And she rises to be a very different kind of leader. And what I love most is while Anna figures out love, you know, 
she becomes one of the great helpers of the world. And that is, a, is wholly her own. And, and I do think that beautiful benevolence of her, that she is, she's completely a typical teenager. She's of spirit. She even made like, maybe I'll get this job. And yeah, maybe things will come out of it. She's so, but as challenged, and I think when you're challenged, your true nature comes, she rises to recognize that that's her greatest gift is her, her compassion for others. You know you're a work of art, even in the deepest dark. If you really want to know just who you are, I'm a star! We're here. <laughs> it, it, it feels I, like we're, I think we talk about as a team, we process, and as a studio, we're kind of processing the excitement of that. And the, the, there, there's a sense of privilege that we get to be a part of it and that we got to create something for it. But what's been most beautiful is never have I fully understood the power of all of our individual connections to that legacy. And there are folks at the studio, you know, we, we got, you know, Bernie Mattinson had been here 70 years, and he was working with the youngest story artist just up until right before, a week before he passed away. And, um, and I'm, I'm getting to work very closely with Eric Goldberg, who, you know, mastermind, hand-drawn um, hand animator of uh, the genie, and, and Chris Buck had worked with the original Nine Old Men, and their stories, they, this brings them to tell. All the stories, because they, they're nostalgically thinking about those hundred years, and then each of us talking about our first film, and, our, and every moment that Disney was there as a light for us, um, we're all sharing, not just in this film, but we're sharing in the entire Disney, every, you know, for most of us, it's one of our earliest memories. So whether you're 34 or 52, um, we're sharing those. And so it's really bringing us together in this way that I always say, wow, it really shows us how much more we're connected than we often realize. We have this king named Magnifico, and he us many years ago. Yeah, my very first was Bambi, um, which was quite powerful. Uh, I was only five. But I think the one, though, that was with me from... I didn't get to see it till I was a little older, but I had the book when I was, I mean, my sister said I was two, probably when I was going on and on with Cinderella. And then she, I, she got me through middle school when I was bullied a lot. And uh, she was there every afternoon and she persevered through some bullying. So um, I know every frame of that movie. I know every object. I know every line. Like it's just, it's, it's there. And it's, it's, I even have in my office, um, they brought, um, prints from the ARL of the, her, in, in 12 drawings of her dress transformation for me. I wish. Whoa, whoa! What was that? Well, I'm very, I, I, I don't know, I'm very close to this film right now, and I'm very close to Asha, and I think as we navigate uh, an ever more complex world that seems to be finding ways to divide us more and more, I think, like Asha, is just hoping we find these ways to just see how much more we're actually connected and let the power of that help us through it. I only can say that I'm, I, I wasn't in the animation room most of the time in this film because I'm it, that not being a director on the film, but I'd heard about that. But one of the things we did um, at D23 when we first announced the film is we invited folks, there was a wall with the word wish on it, and we invited folks to put their own wish on a little sticky that's of stars and put them on the wall. And they actually, every, we've been doing this for about a year now, every day here we have a wall and we, we kept all those wishes and we add another one. So the wall, it's, up, it's upstairs, the wall has started with one and now the whole wall is full as we approach the, the film coming out. And that starting the trigger of everyone connecting with their wish and then that celebration of bringing those forward. See, we were all just little nebulae in a nursery from supernovas. Now we've grown into our history. We're taking wise out of mystery closure. Now we're taking it all the star soldier. I'm going to exclude the parts, the films I've got to work on because I think the relationship with that is just so much more intense than anything that I, nothing compares. But I think um, Cinderella, So This Is Love. I love that song, and the, when his voice cuts through, I'm all alone. Um, I love that, and I over and over again I have listened to that and watched it. Um, and I think actually part of your world. I was about 17 or 18 when Little Mermaid came out, and I was just about to go to college. And I think that that um, idea of going out into the world was there, and I 
horribly sang that over and over again. So in, in, you know, in my little Chevy Chevette that no one could hear me in, so. Hey, you still look like you're hanging on by a strand. But if you just see the mushrooms, then you'll understand. So your dust is my dust? I will say, because I had never seen Cinderella. That's what's weird. Is I'm old enough that they didn't, they would re-release them in theaters. And that was before VHS, which came out when I was about 12 or 13, is when Cinderella came out on VHS. So I think I was eight or nine when it came out in the theater. And I'd had the books, I'd had the, I'd had the record that played the voices, but it was the first time I'd ever seen it. And I, I, I remember just the minute we were, I'm like, can we go right back in again? And at the time, we're like, no, that's, it's expensive. But I was like, oh. So that one for me, because it was one that I had been dreaming about or thinking about and had never, just to, now we have the availability to see them all all the time. Uh, I, don't, I didn't have that, so it really made it truly special. Some of these will never be granted. Not some. Most. They deserve more than... I decide what everyone deserves. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think Ariana, it was, she was so inspirational to, you know, just like all of the actors are, and like Anna um, is very inspired by Kristen Bell, and her personality is with, with um, Ariana, she is such a generous, warm soul, and she's very giving, and she cares very deeply about other people and how they feel, and that came through with Asha, when Asha has a hard time telling her grandfather the news, but has to. That was a hard scene for Ariana, and it helped me to understand how seriously Asha takes the pain that could be caused by any of her choices really drove me. And then, of course, I mean, she can see anything, and she's so physical when she communicates, and because she's a dancer, so that inspired, I know, the animators with Asha. Chris Pine is someone who I just think he's, he's brilliant. He has incredible charm. So... Magnifico, as much as he could be charming and he could be a villain, he had to be brilliant. And he and Chris really is someone who loves to understand all the motivations of the characters, and so understanding every moment of Magnifico's life was important, so we would work on that hard, and then a lot of that ended up in the movie.